Hi, I'm Larry and this is Dad What's For Dinner. Welcome back to my kitchen. Today, we're not making dinner, we're making dessert. We're making cherry fried pie empanadas. Uh, last night I made empanadas for dinner. Didn't really think to make content out of it, but you know, that's a discussion for another day. My wife said, hey, you know, we've got those cherries in the fridge. Uh, that would be really good if you made cherry filling with the empanadas. And I was like, you know what? That's a pretty good idea. So here we are. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so what we're making today are cherry fried pies, empanadas, whatever. I made empanadas last night for dinner. And afterwards, my wife said, you know what would be really good? Because we have these cherries that we got from the market. She said it would be really nice if we had empanadas with cherries in them. And I'm like, that sounds like a really good idea. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm pitting, I think, uh, this is going to end up being about three, maybe four cups of cherries all total when it's all said and done. And we're going to make our pie filling from that. Um, my technique here is probably not what professional pie makers do, but you know, I guess as long as the end result is the same, getting that pit out of there, all is good. I just kind of cut it around, pop off the side, cut out that half, and pull the pit out. So I'm going to finish this up. And then we're going to go on to making the pastry. In hindsight, being 2020, I probably should have done the pastry first because that actually does need to refrigerate and rest for a little bit. I could have let that rest, but you know, it'll all work out and it'll all be good in the end. I mean, it's, it's cherry pie, right? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start making the pastry. I'm just going to cheat a little bit and use the food processor. Nothing exciting here. This is just uh, basically pie dough. You need uh, two cups of just regular, I'm just using AP flour here. And then a teaspoon of salt. And then you need a half a cup of cold butter. Probably should stir that salt in there a little bit. And then we're going to pulse that a few times. Oops. Helps if you put the lid on the right way. And we're just going to pulse that a few times to incorporate that butter and coat the flour. Yep, that looks pretty good. And then we need a half cup of water, which I did not prepare ahead of time. And it has been my experience that this works better if it's cold. So I'm just going to add some ice. 
and then we're going to uh, add this to the dough till it comes together while it's running. Okay, so that sounds like it's ready. We'll take a look at her here. Oh yeah. So I don't know if you can see that in there. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that out. Set that aside. Give that a couple turns on the countertop here. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, cover this, wrap it up, and we're going to put it in the fridge for a little bit, about a half hour-ish. And we will come back after we make our sauce, or not our sauce, I'm sorry, our filling, and pull it out, roll it out, and be making some pies. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started on our filling here. I have approximately four cups of pitted cherries. That was a lot of fun, let me tell you. And we're going to go ahead and put those on heat. And nothing exciting here. We just have to wait for these to start heating up and releasing some of their juices. And after that, we'll go to the next step. So while that's heating up, I'm going to go ahead and prepare the next ingredients that I have, which is a, a cup of just regular white sugar and then a quarter cup of cornstarch. And then we're just going to combine those together. So in the next step, we're going to put all of that into the pot. But I want it all mixed together for that. So I'm just getting things ready. Okay, so something I really forgot to mention, you want this on medium heat and you want to cover it and give it about 10 to 15 minutes. So mm -hmm. that's my bad. Okay, so it's been about 10, 15 minutes. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we got here. Whoosh. Let me turn on my hood fan. And as you can see, these cherries have given off a lot of their liquid. So we're going to take that sugar and cornstarch mixture that I combined. And again, that's a cup of sugar and a quarter cup of cornstarch. And we're just going to add that to the pan. And give this a stir. Get that all combined in there. Try not to burn my fingers in the process. So I'm not a big from scratch pie maker. Usually if I make pies or fruit pies, I'll usually use the, like the, the canned pie filling. So full disclosure here, this is my first time doing this from scratch, but it is my understanding that this is just pretty standard for any fruit filling that, you know, you cook the, the fruit and then you add in your sugar and your cornstarch and you also add in a splash of lemon juice. Please don't come at me for not using fresh lemon. You know, I know. Okay. So it's been about two or three minutes and I think the camera's probably 
thicken it up, but you can see that this is thickened up considerably. Probably could turn that heat down a little bit, but you can see that it's really thickened up. That's, that's that cornstarch. And uh, you can see that it's cut in the back of the spoon pretty well. Um, again, like I said, this is the first time I've actually done from scratch pie filling. So I, I didn't really take into account that I probably should have cut the fruit up a little bit more. So to counteract that, I'm going to go ahead and do a little immersion blending just to, uh, so it's not quite so chunky. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So ideally, like I said, I would have done this before I cooked the cherries. I suppose I could have done like a potato masher or something, but I do happen to have a stick blender, which if you can get your hands on one, if you don't have one, it, it's that kind of tool that you don't necessarily need in the kitchen, but for it's nice to have. Anyway. I'm going to do this and then uh, let this cool and then we'll uh, make our dough, make our pastry. Or we've already made the pastry. We'll, we'll cut it out, roll it out and cut it out. Okay, so it's been about another four or five minutes and this is thickened up. Really looks just like cherry pie filling. So I guess it's a good thing. Anyway, we're going to let this cool. Um... Because if I tried to fill things with this right now, I would probably burn my fingers. All right, so it's been a little bit. Our filling has cooled down. Dough's had a chance to rest. We're going to roll this out. Nothing crazy here. Just going to use a little bench flour. Roll this out. We get to about the thickness that we want, which I'm going to guess probably, what is that, an eighth of an inch, I think, is what pies usually are. I don't know. I'll have to look it up and maybe put it in the video and post editing. But just going by feel, that feels about right. a little bit more all right so i have this neat little gadget not affiliated not sponsored but it's from pampered chef i have a cutter and a crimper and it'll make our assemblage of these things a little bit easier so we're just going to go ahead and use this like an oversized cookie cutter Cut out some rounds and there we go. So the next step is we take our handy dandy filling and we put it in the handy dandy gadget. And it even comes with a handy dandy measuring spoon. And we're going to put in uh, try to put in a whole measure, but it's kind of getting sticky. Mm -hmm. And then we got a crimp, but I got to make it a mess here. There we go. And hopefully. I can get it out of here without it tearing open. There we go. Yeah, I might have overfilled that one. But we'll give it a little extra pinch. And hope that it doesn't bust in the oven. So I'm going to rinse and repeat, and I'll get back to you guys whenever I'm done. Alrighty, so... We are ready to fry, I think. 
we're going to gently place it in the oil. And you see that it's sizzling. That's what you want. And we're gently placing it in there away from us, letting it fall away so it doesn't splash back on us. And I think we're going to get four, maybe five in here. We'll see. Yeah, we'll do five. And you're just going to wait for it to get golden on one side. takes about two minutes, and then we'll flip. All right. Nice golden brown. And we'll give them a flip. Well, that one had a little leakage, but I'm sure it'll taste fine. <sighs> kind of smells like a carnival or a state fair in here, this frying dough. All right, I'm going to call that done. Let me evacuate that out to my tray. I'll give that one a little bit longer. That one, I think we're good. That one's good. Let's see what this one looks like. That one's good. And last but not least, And because I'm being a little bit lazy, I'm going to go ahead, instead of glazing these, I'm just going to sprinkle some sugar while they're still hot. Not ideal, but I don't feel like messing with glaze. So there you have it. I'm going to go ahead and fry the rest of these off, and uh, we'll get uh, have these for dessert. Okay, so here we are, all done all finished up and ready to go um this is cherry fried pie empanadas my first stab at uh pies from scratch and we'll let you know how it is take care god bless and we'll see you on the next one